This is the day that love hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We gather in a tradition of clear windows in which we invite the world to inform our prayer and our practice. And we hope and we trust and we pray that our prayer may be a light unto the world to be a presence of healing and transformation. I am glad to be here. I know there are several people that are out sick that have family emergencies. And so this morning is one of those wonderful moments of being a church that is doing the work together. And we'll begin with announcements, please. Good morning. I'm a little shorter than the average bear. Um, anyway, before we get started, I just wanted to thank everyone one more time for all the support that you've given my husband and me since he had his accident this summer. Um, he's doing well, he's progressing, and this Thursday he's going to go back to the surgeon and they'll take some x-rays and make sure that everything is doing what it should be doing and if so maybe he can take his neck brace off which he would love and maybe he could drive which I would love <laughs> and anyway so thank you again um, it's just wonderful to have the love of the church behind you so thank you and now from the PNC I'm Russ Dowdy. I'm Betty Stockwell. And on the, tw uh, on That's the 20, mine. huh? That's mine. Oh, you say <laughs> And I'm here to provide an update from Pastor Nominating Committee. Now it's my turn? Yes. Okay. Uh, on the 25th of August, we were very happy to report um, that we had finished the um, ministry discernment profile. Am I, oh, thank you, Jim. <coughs> ministry discernment profile <laughs> and we submitted it for approval we submitted it to um, the session and to the presbytery council on ministries and the idea there was to get a review and approval got the approval from session the meeting of the tw uh, 29th and uh, then it was sent out to uh, the Council on Ministries from the Presbytery. Right there. <laughs> you already said that. Okay. Sorry. Just put it together. Um, in past week, our Kay Huggins, our Council on Ministries rep representative, routed. Routed. Mm -mm, send around. Okay, anyway, we took it, she took it to the presbytery and it was approved. So. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> we've, we've been working all summer long, making sure everything was done just as it had been suggested. And so what is next? We are approved to begin our search. So here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Prayers, people. Prayers. Thank you. Good morning. Just a quick announcement. Jerry, I'm right in front of the microphone. Do you yeah. notice? Yes. Um, so next Saturday, a very important event is occurring. KCPC is hosting the annual Presbytery of Northern New England meeting. I think you've all seen the poster out in the narthex. There's still a few more opportunities to sign up and we really need you. At this point, they're estimating 60 people here for like a light breakfast and uh, a more substantial lunch. So if you could sign up where you can. Anybody that signed up for sandwiches, it says on it a half dozen sandwiches. If you could do a dozen sandwiches, that would be great. All right, thank you very much. 
morning. I'm Judy Simmons. My husband, Mike, is in the back there. And uh, back in May, I had asked for prayers for our grandson, Felix, who at five years old had suffered a stroke. And I just want to tell you, yesterday we went to his soccer game. He was out there kicking and smiling and yes. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you to everyone who has given me hugs every week and asked about him and prayed for him. We got our miracle. So thank you for that. And on top of that, two weeks ago, Felix welcomed his second brother. He's got a brother, Ignatius, who's two. And his, um, the third one to join the family is Rocco Dominic. And he was born two weeks ago today. So yes, we've been blessed more than we can imagine. So thank you all for your prayers. We really, really appreciate it. Wow. New beginnings, healings, that's awesome. Um, I have two things. One, please keep my daughter Catherine in your prayers. Um, if she had not gone into labor, they were going to be inducing today or tomorrow. So that is uh, really exciting. It'll be another granddaughter. And uh, we're waiting her anxiously for her to be born out in Iowa. And the other new beginning is choir. We are going to be singing next week. We'll be joining you in worship. If you still are on the fence, there's still time. We've got the best seats in the, in the whole sanctuary. And you don't really even have to worry about what you're wearing. You can just cover it up with a robe. <laughs> Hope to see you then. With these announcements and the cares and joys of life and community, let us prepare ourselves for worship, beginning with the prelude. O oh, Holy One, our tradition teaches us that those who trust in you are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so love surrounds the people, both now and forever. Bidden or not bidden, love is present. The rule of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted 
for then the righteous might use their hands. O Holy One, do good to those who are good, to those who are seeking and open in heart, and for those who turn to crooked ways, transform them and turn them, invite them. May peace be on us and all your people and all your creation. Amen. We reserve this time for children. Where would you like to sit? Where would you like to be for this little portion? Okay. Uh, let us, let's walk around a little bit. Then we'll be everywhere. How's that sound? Can you hold this? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold that microphone. I'm going to hold this microphone. And I'm just realizing that this is probably a nightmare for the person who's going to try to track us <laughs> on the video. Hmm, this modern world. Okay, maybe we'll just stand up front. How about that? Okay, okay let's go. And anybody else who would like to join us? Dougie? <laughs> Anyone else? Harry? <laughs> Ah, Fran, we reserve this time for children. Thank you for... <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's introduce ourselves. You have the microphone. My name is Kurt. What's your name? Julia. Okay, lift it up a little bit. Julia. Okay, who's that over there? Dougie. Jerry. All right, what about over there? <laughs> Nan, our friend has been teaching me uh, vowels for him, so A, E, A, O, U. So Jack is eh. <laughs> we haven't, <laughs> we're not at the consonants. <laughs> yeah. All right, so normally Ms. Roberta's here and she's away today, and so I'm going to tug my earlobe to say hi to Roberta and to say everybody to everybody else who's going to watch this on the screen. You want to tug your earlobe? Anybody? Yeah, like Carol, yeah, like Carol Burnett. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway. Okay, so one of my favorite children's sermons seems apt for this morning when a bunch of people are sick, a bunch of people are out, there are some emergencies, and it just reminds me of this. Do you know this one? Anybody here is the church? Can you 
Wait, 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 wait. You're going too fast there, guys. All right, Julia. All right, how about you give the microphone to one of those guys? Put your fingers together like that. There you go. All right. You want to you teach it now? Okay. Here's the church. <laughs> here's the church. Here's this. You already know this, don't you? Okay. So here's the steeple. Open the doors. And what do you see? We see the people, that the church is people. And what kind of people are these people? Anybody? Anybody? What kind of people are these? <coughs> Loving people. Mm. What else? I was going to say wiggly, but anything else? What, what do you see out there? You see different people. You see relatives. You see people you've known a long time. People. Jerry, help me out here. What do you see from this perspective? Different type of people. Uh, all different type of people. Mm -hmm. All unique. Mm. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Kind. Kind people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That we're practicing being kind. It's not always be easy being kind when unexpected things happen and everything's up in a flurry. But we practice being kind. And I've been thinking about, too, there's a parable about three bricklayers. And a uh, person goes up to one bricklayer and says, uh, what are you doing? And the person says, I'm laying bricks. Okay. Goes to the next bricklayer, says, uh, what are you doing here? Bricklayer says, I'm building a church. I'm like, okay. Goes to the third bricklayer. They're all doing the exact same thing. Third one says, I'm building the house of God. There are different ways of approaching doing the same task with different intent. And so this is a reminder to me that we can build, have nice buildings with beautiful steeples and expensive furnaces and we can keep everything looking really good. And that essentially, that's important, but also the people, the house of God. Can we do an echo prayer? I don't think they know how to do an echo prayer. Maybe they do. They've been watching you for a while. Let us pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for bricks. Thank you, God, for bricks. Thank you, God, for churches. Thank you, God, for churches. Thank you, God, for houses. Thank you, God, for houses. And thank you, God, for people. And thank you, God, for people. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
The passage in Mark that we will be reading from is traditionally a difficult passage because it recounts an instance where Jesus seems to use the metaphor of children's food going to the dogs, and dogs is derogatory. So while the use of dogs in this metaphor sounds very offensive, the important thing is that that's not the end of the story. The context is important in understanding what this story tells us. It tells us that persistence and faith, this Gentile woman's persistence and faith is rewarded in the end. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Shira. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet Jesus could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast out the demon from her daughter. Jesus said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Here ends the reading of the word. Please pray with me. Holy and loving God, source of all life, source of all blessing source of our faith, our hope, our resilience, our persistence, source of inspiration and encouragement to follow the difficult ways to consider the difficult problems. May the words from my mouth and the meditations of each and all of our hearts draw us, O Holy One, closer to you, to one another, and to your good creation. We pray this in the good and strong name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus teaches, with thanks to Barbara and Polly and the Gospel of Mark Thursday group that's been meeting for two and a half years, considering the Gospel of Mark, Jesus teaches for such a reply, you may go. The Greek is the pneuma akarthon, pneuma akarthon, the, which is translated as disease or unclean spirit or demon. It's pretty ambiguous though in, in, in the Greek, the pneuma, the breath, the air, the wind, the spirit. The pneuma akarthon, with the ak meaning not, the arthon meaning um, at ease or well. So a spirit that is not well. For such a reply you may go, the pneuma akarthon has left your daughter. One way to look at faith, growth in faith, spiritual growth, we are a faith community on a spiritual way, trying to encourage each other. One way to look at spiritual growth is the movement from one place to another place. One place maybe being a thin skin with a hard heart. Very reactive and judgmental and everything. You know, the, you kind of see folks and you go, ah, the, they're having a hard time a thin skin and a hard heart. Reactive and unempathetic is another way of thinking about it. Going from that place to having, and I, I confess or I share that I'm working through this process myself as a highly sensitive person, which is usually part of the job description, of having a thicker skin and a more tender heart. 
thin skin to thick skin, hard heart to tender heart. Jesus teaches and demonstrates this kind of spiritual growth, this development of faith practices. Prophets sing and lament and challenge and respond and argue about this process. The body of Christ comforts, encourages, shares the struggles and the questions. Jesus teaches, prophets lament, the body of Christ is us. Our gospel reading includes three characters. One, anybody? Jesus, excellent. Jesus is traveling Let's, let's, let's imagine this side over here, you folks. Help me embody Jesus a little bit. What is it like to be Jesus at this moment? You're a union carpenter. You've got these fishermen. You don't speak the same language necessarily. You're from the same rough trades. And suddenly you're traveling the world and you're, and, and, and you're doing stuff and stuff is happening. And you're working hard and people are following you and you just want a nice weekend on Lake Sunapee where nobody will bother you. All right, can you, can you get that into your body a little bit? So you're, you're working, you're working, you're working, you're working. You're proclaiming people are following you. They're asking lots of things. The world is going to hell and nobody seems to care except they want you to solve it. Have you, you, got, you got this? And you just want a nice weekend to relax, read your favorite book, watch some television, whatever your favorite, favorite practices. You got it? That's the state of mind of Jesus as we begin this gospel. Okay, over here. Now, we have a woman from Syrophoenicia, a Gentile, a Greek. The Greeks were great empire that then got taken over by the Roman Empire. Their gods were taken over by the Romans and made into Roman gods. They have these huge monuments and this pride in their tradition. And you are a woman from Syrophoenicia. You are old money. You are old culture. You are the establishment. You were here first. And for generations upon generations, it has been your people who have been the captains of industry that have developed the silk that makes the world go around. You have uh, been generous through the generations of establishing schools, of museums, of symphonies. All the culture of the region comes from your family, from your people. And you are accustomed, because of these deep-rooted traditions and commitments, to having services available that every human being should have. The essential services of health and education and clean water and freedom from gun violence, those are what every person needs and you have been accustomed to until this moment. A pneuma, a carton, has descended upon your family. The ones whom you are most committed to, that you care the most about. You're accustomed to taking care of your family. The needs have been provided for. And this horrible thing has happened. And you don't know what to do. However... You hear about somebody over here who is not of your people, is not of the establishment. You don't really speak their language. You don't like their customs. You see where I'm going with this. You have a burnt out Jesus and a desperate, highly cultured woman crossing the aisle 
bowing down, doing anything, busting through the door of the cottage on Lake Sunapee that nobody can find, and bowing down, asking for help. There's a saying that when we don't show up, when we're distressed about stuff, when our anxiety is high, when there's a lot of stress, it's hard to bring your best self to a meeting. And that a mismeeting, one Jewish thinker, um, Martin Buber, talks about, is that a mismeeting is inevitable if we d- aren't all there. In the tradition of Mark of being very human while also being divine, Jesus, in the cottage, feet kicked up, bathing trunks, whatever, relaxing. Busting through the door comes a person from the establishment, from the other culture, speaking to him as a working class person, breaking through his hard earned quiet and demanding that she be served. I understand her. Do you understand her a little bit? where she's coming from? Do you understand where Jesus is, might be coming from? <sighs> Jesus, shall we say, responds with, um, with a saying from the construction site in coarse language and says, uh, take a number. Get in line. There's a whole list of people that are waiting for health care right now. Why should you, establishment person, just because you expect it and it, everybody deserves it, there's a lot of people who deserve it. He, he says nasty thing, um, saying, you people that are not like my people who have been impressed by your people, um, you're like, I don't like the, this is me speaking, I don't like that he calls them dogs because dogs, like, you know, when I die, I want to be a dog. Like, every dog I care for, I, I hope that, like, they take a piece of my heart and then I become more dog. So, but not human, subhuman is the point. Is these people, my people, have been struggling and I'm trying to care for them and I'm just trying to take a break. And then you come along and you expect to be served first and no. Take a number. To which, somehow or another, this woman remarkably talks back to Jesus. It's like Moses arguing with God in the Old Testament. Maybe, maybe, who is this woman from Syrophoenicia? We have no idea. I just have a judgment as to who she is, trying to piece it together. She responds in the prophetic tradition and says, yes. And, and Jesus, catching up with himself, perhaps, says, yes, and you are right. And you owe me nothing. And perhaps, thank you for reminding me of our common humanity. I have been so stressed out by caring for my carpenters and fisher people and these folks who have been oppressed that I've forgotten about how you need care. You have replied well. You may go home. You you owe me nothing. As Jesus does so many times, it's not about enslaving people to his agenda, to his party. It's about the transformation of culture and of humanity that, as Fran reminds me, we are on team... Team human. For such a reply, you may go. The Numa Akartan has left your daughter. There are some folks in the congregation who, it's a strange season. I love September, and there's a lot of people who are sick. There are a lot of people who are in the hospital. There's a lot of stuff going on with a lot of people. And one of the ways that I center myself pastorally is when I think of a person, you know, thinking of a song, and it's form of self 
self-soothing for me is like, okay, I'm thinking of this person, so I'll just sing myself a little song, and that's why I'm in the <clears throat> So one of the people uh, who's been out and recovering is a Neil Young fan. So the, this last week, after um, Deacon's meeting, and Gospel of Mark, and some other meetings, and talking with people about the news and the shooting in Georgia, and then last night, I think it was, there was I-191 outside of Louisville, where I used to live. There was a shooting there, and the, Doug, do I have confirmation on that? What, what exactly happened? A highway shooting. A highway shooting. A highway shooting. Uh, so Doug and Eve lived in Louisville as well. And so the Neil Young song that I've been using to self-soothe is a lament. It's a prophetic statement from 1971, from March 14th, 10 days after March 4th. What if you knew her, found her dead on the ground? How can you run when you know? Four dead in Ohio, four dead in Ohio, how many more? So this was a song written right after the shooting at Kent State in 1971. So what I'm trying to say is we have this tradition of Jesus who teaches us about being part of Team Human that even Jesus is crass and hard-hearted and thin-skinned. Even Jesus learns, has a growth mindset, is able to turn. And there's the prophetic tradition that speaks back, that sings back, that comforts and laments and cries out, how many more? And we are the body of Christ that comforts and encourages us to grow from thin skins and hard hearts that can't handle any more news to having thick skins and tender hearts, comforting and encouraging one another and not grow weary in doing what needs to be done. I don't have answers regarding gun violence. I don't have answers regarding illness. Our scripture suggests that the pneuma akartan, whatever it may be, can leave our loved ones. And we need to talk back, whatever that may be. And we need to go home. We need to do our work. We need to bow down, respect our limits, and join together. We join together with thoughts and prayers, being the body of Christ, that are also the hands and the feet. And in this worship space, with clear windows, I invite us to say, in the words that are most comfortable to each of us, the the prayer that Jesus taught saying are All that we have and all that we are comes from the Holy One of which we are stewards. And when we gather for worship, we gather our resources, we gather what we have, and we share them for the common good. I invite the ushers to receive this morning's offering. saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee. Fear not, for I, I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. 
Thou art mine. Holy One, bless these gifts, these gifts that we make manifest in these tithes, in these offerings, and bless us in our breathing in and our breathing out, that we may breathe out your healing spirit, that we may use our gifts, our talents, our mind, our intellects, our hands, our hearts, our feet, to be the body of Christ, to be a healing and hopeful presence in a hurting world. We pray this in your name. Amen. Although it says, nevertheless, nevertheless, it says in the bulletin that we are celebrating the Lord's Supper this morning. I invite you to do that at your own family tables with your own <laughs> bread, your own wine, and your juice as an extension of this table. For we do it every time we gather and we eat. As followers of Jesus, we engage in those practices. I invite us now to sing our concluding hymn. We have gathered on this sunny September Sunday in this place made of bricks, wood, a place we call church, invited to be formed and reformed in the house of God, formed and reformed to be the body of Christ and to go into the world to do God's work. As we go forth, I offer you an ancient blessing that you may be a blessing to those who you meet along the way. May the Holy One bless you 
and keep you. May the face of the Holy One shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Holy One look upon you with such tender, loving kindness and grant you a peace and a courage and a lament like you have never known before. I invite us all to say,